you're phoning me. I don't know how to react to you. I was just being honest. He said, what do you mean? I said, you're the Pope of the Universal Church. <laughs> 1.2 billion people. And I'm just an, uh, an everyday clergyman doing his bit for the kingdom. He said, Tony, we cut coven. We are brothers. He said, nothing will change that friendship. So I went last Tuesday. I went to see him. We had the morning together, just me and him, the whole morning in his apartment. And uh, I asked him, I said, uh, so what's the agenda? Why did you call me? He said, I have no agenda. There's nothing to discuss. That's a father. That's a mentor. So I started to tell him, you know, I said, I can't believe I'm sitting here. I said, you know how much we can do together? Yes. And we made a covenant to work for unity for the church. And I said, listen, next week, I'm going to Kenneth Copeland Ministries Ministers Conference. And I told him about you. I told him all your crazy stories. <laughs> I said, there's going to be thousands of leaders, and these guys have their jets. They've got TV shows. And I said, they've got churches of 10,000, 2,000, 20,000. I said, these are big fishes. He said, OK. So I'm waiting for him. And he says, uh, you want to take a message next week to Texas for me? I said, yes, sir. So I said, do you want me to write it down? He said, why don't we make a video? And so we've had it edited. We've had it subtitled because he speaks in Italian. We, he doesn't speak English. He tries in the beginning, but then he switches to Italian straight away. So tonight, the Pope, it's a historic moment because I've never, I've served three popes because I started working with them when John Paul was still alive and then Pope Benedict, and now Pope Francis. And you know, Pope Francis, St. Francis of Assisi was an open charismatic. This is the first pope in history that took the Francis's name, because he's openly charismatic. And this is history that we've got a pope who recognizes us as brothers and sisters, speaks to us as brothers and sisters, and has sent a message to us. And you'll see what the message is about. This is very important. We know that the first thousand years there was one church, it was called the Catholic Church. And the word Catholic means universal, it doesn't mean Roman. Catholic means, if you're born again, raise your hand if you're born again. You're a Catholic. <laughs> Take back, redeem what belongs to you. We are Catholics. And then there was the split at the end of the first millennium. We had the Orthodox, East and West, two churches. Then 500 years later, we have Luther and his protest. Three churches in 1,500 years. Three denominations, not three churches. And then, from Luther's protest onwards, 33,000 new denominations. The glory that the Father had, he gave to Jesus. The glory was the presence of God. What is the charismatic renewal? It's when we experience the presence of God. And he said, and I give them the glory, pragmatic reason, so that they may be one. It's the glory that glues us together, not the doctrines. It's the glory. If you accept that Christ is living in me and the presence of God is in me and the presence of God is in you, that's all we need. Because God will sort out all our doctrines when we get upstairs. Now, why is it historic? Because in 1999, the Roman Catholic Church and the Protestant Lutheran Church signed an agreement that brought an end to the protest. Luther believed that we were saved by grace through faith alone. Amen. But that's not it. The Catholic Church believed that we were saved by works. And that was the protest. In 1999, they wrote this together. Because in the Protestant church, we had a lot of cheap salvations. 
people were getting born again, but no fruit whatsoever. And because we didn't even look for fruit, it wasn't the issue, because it wasn't necessary for salvation. And no, it's not. But it's a good judge if you are saved. So what these two churches did, they put the two definitions together. Listen to it. I'm reading verbatim from the Catholic Vatican website. Justification means that Christ himself is our righteousness, in which we share through the Holy Spirit in accord with the will of the Father. To, together, we Catholics and Protestants, Lutherans, believe and confess that by grace alone, in faith, in Christ's saving works, and not because of any merit on our part, we are accepted by God and receive the Holy Spirit who renews our hearts while equipping and calling us to good works. This brought an end to the protest of Luther. So the protest has been over for 15 years. And I get a bit cheeky here because I challenge my Protestant pastor friends. If there is no more protest, how can there be a Protestant church? Maybe we now we're all Catholics again. <laughs> but we are reformed. We're Catholic in the universal sense. We are not protesting the doctrine of salvation by the Catholic Church anymore. We now preach the same gospel. We now preach you are saved by grace through faith alone. The word alone was the argument for 500 years. He said, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be one in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you have given me I have given them, that they may be one as we are one.